Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, here with my co-host Steve Chambers, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of EMC World 2015 here in Las Vegas. Uh, always love when we get to talk to the practitioners. Uh, joining us for this segment, coming all the way from Melbourne, Australia, uh, first time on theCUBE, Pavel Rojic, <laughs> a senior technical analyst with skilled engineering. Pavel, thank you much, so, so much for making the trip and uh, for joining us on theCUBE. Thank you. All right, C can you tell us, uh, for, for those that aren't familiar, uh, Skilled Engineering, you're a very large firm, but uh, yes. one that most of us aren't as familiar with. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the company and your role there. So, Skilled Group is the largest um, company in workforce services in Australia. We employ around 50,000 people a year with uh, more than 80 branches uh, across Australia and uh, approximately uh, 20 branches around the globe. Okay, so, so 20 locations. Can you sketch out a little bit for us the IT department, how many people they are, and your role there? Uh, so the, we have relatively small IT department, yeah. especially the infrastructure one. We have uh, six people in infrastructure. Yeah. We're doing most of our stuff in-house, uh, not using a lot of integrators, yeah. or not outsourcing right. any of our jobs. Uh, we have a quite large uh, development team there, we're developing a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. and, and, and when it comes to the infrastructure, it sounds like you've got a big piece of it. Server, storage, network, all of those under you. Did I miss something? Yes, security as well. Oh, <laughs> of course, Steve, Steve, would, Steve would keep me honest on, on, on the security piece there. Um, so can, can you talk a little bit about the, the role of IT and how, how you help serve the business? So uh, we need to make sure that uh, our systems are available 24 by 7. Uh, we actually placing people 24 hours a day, seven, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, it's it's a really big part of the organization, and you know, uh, pay calculations. You know, just imagine if some 50,000 people won't get their paychecks I know, on I was time. I just going to ask you, you yeah. know, what does business critical mean to you? And yeah. I think that's <laughs> the most important. That's right. right? Getting, yes, getting people's paychecks to them. Yeah. yeah. So in, in terms of the um, uh, the developers and the IT guys, are you at sub separate ends of the building? Do you work together? How does how does that work out? No, we actually work close together. Uh, we sitting all together in oh. Melbourne. So all the IT uh, we have centralized data centers. Uh, it's in two locations: one in our main building uh, that we sit, and the other one is in Telstra co-location. And is that including like the operations, IT operations as well, or is that a different group? So you've got developers, you've got the infrastructure guys. Are, are you running it as well as deploying it? You know, how does? Yes, we are. Wow. Yeah, so so <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, does the term DevOps, does that resonate with what you guys are doing, or uh, how, how do you look at DevOps? Uh, yeah, it is, uh, as I said, uh, we, uh, we try all the time to improve our systems uh, to give uh, better solutions to our clients and obviously to save costs. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, we, we heard yesterday at the EMC Code Day, um, I don't know if you attended that, but it was a you know, real successful day and DevOps was a main theme. Mm. Uh, there was an interesting uh, a gentleman from Puppet Labs. Uh, we had some for Chef, some for Puppet Labs. Do you use systems like that to manage your infrastructure? Uh, not right now, but right. we are definitely looking at it and okay. considering what do, you, do you, what do you use today? Do you do you use any uh, kind of enterprise class management suites? Um, no, not right now. Most of it are uh, script based. Uh, we have a lot of customized stuff, and there is a lot of uh, test environments and a lot of needs to refresh those test environments oh, right, frequently. Uh, they're quite large. We have uh, probably uh, over uh, 40, 50. VMs per test environment, right. around four or five uh, Oracle databases and multiple SQL databases, and we can have 10, 12 of those test environments. 
stuff shoot that trip. Yeah, I wonder if you could dig in a little bit for the network uh, for us. So, you know, you've got a relatively small team, but, you know, it's mission critical, as we know. Yeah. You know, the network needs to keep up and running or somebody's probably out of a job. Can, can you discuss for <laughs> us what your network look like? Uh, you know, what, what, what solutions are you using today? So, recently we implemented an active active topology. Uh, we're using VMware as our hypervisor. Uh, and we basically moving workloads between two sites. Um, the storage uh, is extreme IO. We're utilizing VPlex for the active active topology for the disks and VDXs for for the networking. That that was actually really okay. interesting. And, and, and just in case people don't know, the VDX that that's Brocade's Ethernet product that, that that's you're right. using. That's <laughs> right. Uh, you know, what, what's kind of the, the, the size of that the, the switching infrastructure that you've got? Any a rough idea on the ports? So it is quite large. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like that probably four or five years ago. We grew a lot. Uh, we're buying a lot of companies and integrating them. Uh, everything is centralized, so you can imagine um, the size of the two data centers okay. right and, now. And you know, is, is, you, is your network mostly 10 gig today, or what, what's the? Yeah, it's end to end 10 gig um, for the server infrastructure. We have uh, 20 gig fibers between the two data centers. Uh, one VCS fabric in a VDX to be able to accommodate all the active active. Any particular reason for using Ethernet storage? You know, was it like the design thinking, or you know, what uh, is it easy to operate? You know, what's the it, it was, it was quite easy to configure and mm -hmm. to operate and. As well, troubleshoot later on. Because I think you know fiber channel as well, don't you? So yes, we're using a lot of fiber channel as yeah. well. Yeah. And so, so it is, are the same people managing the fiber channel as the Ethernet? Yes. Um, and what, what's the what's the product mix that you have? I mean, is it you know 50/50 or is there a lot more Ethernet? I would think. Uh, so uh, it's probably 50/50. It's actually uh, all the servers and all the storages are connect connected to both. So we have fiber channel and FCOE in case of one of them will fail. The second one is a backup and we're using power path to be able to manage. Well, you really don't want to lose any connectivity, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very impressive. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of drawing a mental sketch in my head of the architecture and the kind of the cabling and, um, you know, what's it like to operate something like that? Once, it, once it's all connected and up and running, you know, do you have to, is someone constantly watching some dials moving or, is it no. kind of, what, what's that famous phrase, why once and walk away, right? Is it that kind of? Really yeah, so basically what we found is uh, with EMC and Brocade solutions, uh, if if the design is right and it's configured correctly, you don't need to touch it. Yeah, it just works and it works for us really well. We're really happy with the performance and the outcome and yeah. the stability of the system. So, so Pavel, you're using both the, your, the fiber channel and the Ethernet. Um, so, you know, I think everybody knows that EMC and Brocade have had a long relationship. I mean, the fiber channel side, it's over 15 years. Can you talk on the Ethernet side, though? I mean, I, I know EMC has made some announcements with Brocade. Was EMC involved uh, at all in that piece of it? And, you know, what did you see from the customer standpoint? Yes, so EMC definitely was involved because uh, the last project that we did probably was around six months ago. So EMC was involved in that process. We uh, actually bought the whole lot as one package, include the brocade. Yeah. Excellent. So how do EMC and brocade together help you with kind of the future growth of the company? That's a hard question. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, to be able to move the workloads between the data centers, and especially for us, uh, to be able to shut down one data center and run the whole lot in the other data center without downtime, it's a very big step up. Um, Is that something you do? Because that sounds like a big, scary thing to do, right? To not anymore. Really? Oh, wow. okay. yeah. <laughs> and the other good thing that we don't have any more DR tests, because wow, we're testing our DR point. every day. <laughs> Machines are migrating between data centers yeah. with uh, you know DRS every minute, wow. and 
there's no DR testing. Well, good job. So, so I, I guess the last question I want to ask you is, do you have any advice for your peers as they're looking at this space, uh, especially kind of the IP storage networking? Mm. Uh, what, what advice would you give them? I think a lot of research, talk to the vendors, talk to EMC and Brocade together. Um, you know, read on the internet as well. There's a lot of smart people out there. All right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Pavel, you know, thank you so much for making the trip. Appreciate you coming on the program, uh, sharing with your peers, because as you said, you're, they're also going to find not just the internet, but, but talking to those that have gone before and done it. So thank, thanks for sharing your story. Uh, we'll be back with lots more here from EMC World after this quick break.